Tube First. button, go live. And then I think we, uh, oh, transition to the black screen. And then transition. Okay. My oh, citrus cluster, you've got a little bit of baked apple in there. Not too much on the uh, the oaky side, not a lot of secondary characteristics here. There's no oak in there, there's no leaves aging, it's just bright fresh fruit. And then also no tertiary characteristics. So when I want to pick that bottle up, I'm hoping it's going to be something younger, 2020, 2019, that kind of a recent vintage, not something that's had a lot of age. So we've done that with the nose, and then we're gonna have a little taste. When we taste, what we're really doing is confirming what we've what we've got from the aromas. So is it the same on the palate? Is it that same lemon, that same baked apple, that same grapefruit characteristic? Is there suddenly a side of oak or not? And for me, this sits exactly as it was on the palate. You've got that, that great citrus, you've got a little bit of baked apple, and this nice round fruity flavor to it. So now we've done the flavors, the other things that we can pick up on the palate, are things like sweetness, acidity, body. And what are we looking at? So I think what's important here is not to confuse sweetness with fruitiness. There's lots of wines that are very, very fruity, but are absolutely bone dry. And that's because when we taste something and it tastes of melon, for example, or honeysuckle or honey in general, we associate that with being a sweet flavor, therefore we think there must be sugar. It's purely the flavor that the grape and the wine takes on. So sweetness is a scientific measure of how much sugar is in that. Um, and the way you can test that is your palate tastes different things in different places, but sweetness is right on the tip of your tongue. So if you just put a little bit of the wine right on the tip of your tongue, if you can taste sweetness, it's sweet. If it's just cold, wet and white, it's absolutely dry, so that's a good little thing you can do. We then look at the acidity, and that's that kind of beautiful freshness. And acidity is hugely important in wine to create balance. Um, and a way you can taste and check for acidity, which is lovely and it's great because I get 300 people in front of me to do this kind of acidity testing. Just take a little sip, hold it in your mouth, and just put your head down and open your mouth. And you should, if there's lots of acidity there, start to feel that saliva run from the back of your mouth and coat your palate. If there's not a lot of, you know, a lot going on, not much acidity. If there's a lot and you feel you're like, oh, I've got to get my head back up, there's absolutely a lot of acidity there. And then we can consider the body. And this is the weightiness of the wine and how much it, you feel it on your palate and around the mouth. And if you kind of want to do a comparison in, in, in real world, you can, you can look at milk and you can have skimmed milk, which is very light, very watery. You then have semi-skilled, and then you have full fat milk. So your skim milk is that light bodied wine. The semi-skimmed is your kind of medium body. And then that full fat is that weighty full bodied wine. So if you look at those, that can kind of give you a bit of a clue as to where the wine sits. And the line is, every wine is in comparison to the rest. So you might pick this up and go, this is full bodied compared to something else, or this is light body compared to something else. So what you're trying to do is put each wine you taste on a finite scale. And what you do when you taste, if you kind of go along the, the WSET route, is you will put a conclusion into the quality of the wine. And this is what's called the Blick scale. So that's B-L-I-C for balance. So your balance, is there the balance between acidity, fruit, sweetness? Is there balance in a red wine between fruit and tannin? Does everything all come together? And then you'll rate that as average, good, very good, or outstanding. There is a low tier called poor, and hopefully we're not getting into that tier too often. So we decide where that wine is. L is for length. And that's when you sip the wine, how long it then the flavor hangs out in your mouthful. So anything up to about five or six seconds, short up to about 12 13 seconds medium and longer than that becomes a long finish and once again we will rate that from that poor to the outstanding level next up is i for intensity and intensity is like how powerful the wine is if you put your nose in your bang it blows you away and then on the palate it's rich and pronounced and there's a lot of stuff going on there that's very very intense same level again um, from poor to outstanding and then we have C for complexity. And complexity is how many things are going on. When we talk about 
the fruit flavors? Are there lots of these different clusters? Is there citrus? Is there herbal? Is there, you know, orchard fruits? Is there secondary flavors? Are there tertiary flavors? And if there's a lot of those going on, it can be very, very complex once again. Same range. And then we look at these ranges and go, well, where do we average out? If the uh, balance is good and the length is good and the intensity is outstanding and the complexity is very good, we might overall have a good to very good wine. So we take that, you know, and that's every wine on the scale. So that kind of gives you your value of where your wine should be for its overall quality. So if you want to improve your tasting, try your wines blind. Have a friend pour it for you, grab a bottle, get something from behind the bar and ask someone to put it in and try it and taste it before you know what it is because, so you don't have any preconceived notions. With the Online Wine Tasting Club, you've got the option of having 72 brand new wines through your door each year to try and taste. And you can you know, hide the booklet and don't try it and taste the wine to get in there before you know what the next wine is. And keep learning, keep trying, keep tasting because the more you learn, the more you know, the easier it is to get to your next great glass of wine. But that is quite enough about how to taste wine. So let's move on to the rest of the curriculum. And we start with wine number one, chemistry. And we're talking about oxygen. Now, most people see oxygen as the traditional enemy of many a wine. And winemakers absolutely see this. When you open a wine and come back to it a week later, it can taste flat and dull with all of those delicate fruit flavors gone. What happened is that they reacted with the oxygen and it destroyed them. The winemaker tries so hard to avoid this by keeping all of the barrels topped right up or by using stainless steel airtight tanks. And they also use throughout all stage of the winemaking inert gases which don't react with the wine. They sit on top of the grapes or the wine in the tank and they keep that oxygen away and preserve it. Now that is absolutely what we do when we repack the wines for you. The wine sits in a protected tank and then we flush all of the oxygen out of the pouch whereas the wine pours in and then is sealed tight. However, there is a tiny island where they do not follow this kind of practice at all. Madeira. Here, the oxygen is absolutely key to its production and to its long-lasting qualities. But why on earth would they have chosen to do that when everybody else tries to avoid it? Well, Madeira's wines were first designed to travel in the heat on sailing boats. These went on long voyages all around the world for months at a time, and during these journeys the barrels would leak slightly. The wine would evaporate and also soak into the wood. All in all, this left a huge amount of air right at the top of the barrel. This then sloshes around with the wine and makes it react even more. So what you taste when it arrives is ridiculously different to what left the winery and not very pleasant. Furthermore, the wine was very susceptible to bugs that might get into it that can turn alcohol into vinegar. Yeah, that's not what you want. All in all, making wine that can travel is very hard. So what the Madeirans did, rather than trying to protect it from start to finish, they simply accepted their fate. First of all, like the producers of port, they fortified the wine by adding brandy. This made it a place that yeast and bacteria could not survive in, making it stable. But then they slowly aged the wine over several years in very empty looking barrels with lots of oxygen in, in the heat. As the wine ages, the better examples such as this one gradually go down through what's called a canteiro system into the cooler and cooler cellars below, where it can sit for decades or even longer. The cheaper simple versions just sit in very hot warehouses. Now of course, when you do this, all of those delicious fruity flavours vanish in just a few days. But what develops instead over time is one of the wonders of the wine world. Rich, complex, mind-bending numbers of different, incredibly subtle flavours. Madeira is perhaps the world's most underrated wine, and it comes in a vast number of different styles. Landis are one of the oldest producers and are the only remaining family from the original founds of the Madeiran wine trade who still own their own business. This one is made from 100% Vidalio, and that is a grape which many believe was native originally to Madeira and was widely cultivated in the 17th century. This is a cracking wine with a little sweetness and lots of savoury notes, but all perfectly balanced with these strong, complex flavours that would not have come about without its unique rule-breaking attitude to winemaking and the curative effects of oxygen.
Hello, welcome back. Now, this was a quite a, an interesting and a, a, a challenging wine to go for because, like, uh, I think Madeira suffers from that sort of sense when you first taste it of you're taken back a long way in your life, aren't you, to 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 this thing? But it, it, it's something that uh, crit wine critics absolutely love, um, and it's a it's a divisive style. It's it's got quite a bit of sweetness on it. No, it's divisive. Um, it's either great or really great. <laughs> that's that's a fair point. But um, but yeah, it, it's it's. We had some really fun tasting notes, and uh, actually, I don't know if we've got the tasting notes up just let's yet. Get let's, get let's get the poly up. Let's get the tasting notes Aside up. from any mentions of badges, yeah, no more badges. Might have okay. snuck and in anyone there again. sneaks a badge in the tasting notes, you <laughs> straight into detention. Yeah, straight yeah, into exactly. detention. Yeah. Um, but um, but yeah, it's it, it has it has that sweetness, and it's when you were talking about your primary, secondary, and tertiary, it's it's all of those nuts that you get. He's going to say you're nuts, isn't he? Um, no, nope. no. Nope. So he's going to take the high ground for oh. once in his life. Anyway, exactly. but yes, you've, you've got those, all of those sort of, you know, marzipan-like um, oxidised characteristics that really come through. And it, it, it's certainly, it's not to everyone's taste, but it is an utterly, utterly fascinating wine. So I'm going to address the, uh, the elephant in the room. Oi! <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Sorry, miss. Um, anyway, so there, there was a comment in the chat is, why did we put this slightly sweet wine first? Well, it's, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a good question. Oh, I'm answering that question. Yeah, you are. Okay, absolutely. I'm answering you that question. put it there. <laughs> I absolutely. So, two, two reasons behind this. So, so Madeira is this port de style, and you've got, you've got your four main stars. You've got Sergio, you've got this Fidello, you've got the Boal and the Malmsey, yeah? Boal and Malmsey are definitely on the very, very sweet side, sweet and you'll be yeah. having that at the end. Um, this, I feel, can kind of sit somewhere in between. Yeah, especially um, nicely chilled. When you're sitting in a tasting environment, having this first, it's, you know, it's the richest wine we have, it's the sweetest wine mm. we're doing today, but also it's the highest alcohol. So I didn't want to leave a 19% wine to the end, because I know how everyone gets all very excited, and leaving him to a 19% wine at the end, <laughs> I put him at the beginning, he's going to be much funnier by the time wine three comes um but it's also i thought that we start with this we had a little bit of a longer video to introduce things it was more of a sipping kind of thing and the next one we go to is rather different it's yeah. rather different it is it um, is yeah absolutely Oh, I didn't think that. Oh, sorry, I thought they were I up already. Were yeah. So we got all that sort of toffee, you know, that burnt caramel kind of uh, flavour that, that, that's absolutely coming through. The almonds I can see there. Um, I'm struggling slightly with the size of it, but uh, I could look on my phone. No, I'm not going to. Can... Sweet. Peanuts is an interesting. Peanuts. It has this nuttiness. It's got this hazelnut. It's got this caramel. It's got this toffee. Yeah. But I used to have a pet daegu called Peanuts. <laughs> Fact of the day. <laughs> there we are, and we all Keep thought. On topic, no badgers, no badgers. Yeah, we all um, we all thought we came here to learn about wine, but uh, apparently <laughs> not. But anyway, my final point on this is made by Blandies, who are one of the oldest, oldest house. They make phenomenal yeah. wine, phenomenal, phenomenal Madeira. Absolutely love them. The reason that was there first is because it was fortified, it was big, it was rich, yeah. it was sweet, and it gave a little bit of time to sip through while we had that first video. Mm. And as we move on to the second wine, the second wine. Are you going to open it or are you drinking? Both. Multitask. I thought I might need something with which to open it, oh, I suppose. My but, word. Uh, there you go. There we go. Happy times. Did you not, not come to school with your correct... I, 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 didn't, I didn't bring my pencil case. Don't get a detention. And mark. also, um, I, I, I'm not sure I'm the best person oh, to be trusted with a knife these days. <laughs> um, Taylor, yes. there's been a question whether you're being bullied and your finger's been <laughs> shut in the desk. <laughs> <laughs> If only. But, do you know what? There's a there's a funny I have story there. The viewers I'm okay. We we do indeed. We are we. <laughs> we, we like, uh, yes, we do. Um, yeah, uh, th there is a funny story here because okay, tell um, it, a while, tell, a while tell, ago, tell it tell it quickly. Because, we did no. a food and wine pairing. Got a syllabus uh, to go through here. And it was brilliant. That was on the Adventurer series, and it was great fun. Jamie picked three wines, I picked three wines, and people at home cooked along. And, and those decided, and decided I picked the better wines. I know. And it was great. I, I recorded the YouTube cooking video, the instructions, and Jamie took one look at it, and he says, "Mate, you leave your little finger out when you're chopping things." He cuts like he's having a cup of tea at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so. 
So, uh, while I was on ho holiday in Cornwall with my uh, with my wonderful family, I decided I'd make a nice little omelette with some uh, courgettes and mushrooms for my father for his breakfast. And um, oh, so you started... I decided to add some protein oh, to you, it. So you started vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> it did. It started vegetarian. But it's all fine now, and it will get better soon, and uh, that's quite enough about that. Yeah, we are... Going to... Yeah, we're, we're running the through... The Yeah, from we need to get moving. We're 25 the minutes in, we're only on um, So... This is you geography. A lot of, this is geography. We are now in a geography class, and, and you can't go to many better places for talking geography than, 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 than the Canary Islands, and in particular Tenerife, because it has the highest peak in the, all of the Canary Islands at more than, I think, 3,600, 3,700 metres tall. Um, and it is a staggering place. And we've got it in the video, so you'll get to see that. Um, but on the north slope of the island, um, all of the wind comes in, and I think it's called the trade winds, and they bring in all of this moisture that's been gathered over the, the Atlantic Ocean, and it dumps that rain on the north side of the island, meaning it's lush, it's beautiful, it's green, it's not what you expect from Tenerife. And that is why all the tourists stay away from it, and why also all the winemakers go there, because they've got the water they need to grow grapes. Absolutely. And the other thing that, that these, this island region has is these beautiful beautiful sandy soils mm. and therefore um the tenerife has never ever had phylloctera and phylloctera was this horrible bug that killed all the grapes in europe then all the grapes in america and uh you know the reason that we've had to do rootstock and grafting and that's nothing to do with geography we'll talk about a little bit about that when we get to biology um but it means that it's some of the oldest vines in the world the oldest grapes in the world and this is made with a grape called palomino fino so it says lista blanco which mm -hmm. is the local name for it palomino fino which is used to make More sherry sherry so, so there is a link almost in so we've style, gone from but... one style of fortified wine to yeah. a grape a wine made like a sherry but with obviously this heating which is the real key behind the madeira and that really helps the oxygen bind in and clears up all of the beautiful fresh fruit flavors that normally you try to preserve but here we have a wine that's made in a more conventional modern method but it's grown in these crazy ways they tie all the vines together and create these elaborate structures and they've been like this for, for for years and years and the soils like you say it's sandy it's volcanic ash that's all just fallen down from this huge volcano in the middle of the island and it's it's all loose and constantly moving so they bind these vines together to give it protection from that wind and give it some structure you don't have to do that anywhere else so why would you we could talk about it we could we could look at it we could look at it let's we look could. at it all right Tenerife is another island that is familiar to so many of us. It's down near the equator which gives it year-long good weather. For those who manage to escape their resorts and the water parks on the Costa Adeje and dared to travel up into the volcanoes, well, they will have had a treat because it is an astonishing otherworldly environment. Near the top of Mount Tader, you really could be on Mars. In fact, this is where NASA have tested their robots which headed to Mars. It's even been a filming site for Mad Max, Planet of the Apes and Star Wars. It really is quite something. Travelling further on to the northern coast of the island, as you drop down out of the desert at the top of the mountains caused by a rain shadow. Yes, I got to use that one again. Suddenly, you find yourself in lush prehistoric forests. It's quite incredible. And it's on this northern coast on the slopes of the volcano that many of the vineyards grow. There are some utterly unique properties Again, no phylloxera, some novel training techniques like cordon trensada, where all the vines are woven together into long, long chains, and there are plenty of grape varieties that only exist here. We visited the winery Vignatigo to find Jesus, specifically Juan Jesus Mendez. Unfortunately, his winemaking is a bit better than his English, so his daughter Celia came along to translate. I am Mendez and I am here with in the winery in Bodega Signatigo in the village of La Guancha. It's a very small village in the northwest of the island of Tenerife in the Canary Islands. I guess that you Britons um, usually travel to, to the Canary Islands and maybe have heard about them. Well, we are not in the touristic part of it. We are in the northwest, west, which is um, colder, uh, lusher. And I think that's more beautiful than the desertic south where it's full of hotels. Um, the thing is that we get 
uh, much more influence of the trade winds. And this is something that we are really going to dig into when we talk about the wines. Because in the Canary Islands, we get all the influence of the trade winds that uh, are born in the Gulf of Mexico and go all the way up to Canada and then go all the way down the Atlantic, taking all that freshness of the ocean. So when they arrive to the Canary Islands, in some of the islands, they don't really stop. They just go by because there aren't big geological accidents. But in the island where we are, which is Tenerife, right here, we have uh, the highest peak of Spain, which is Volcan Teide. Volcano Teide. Uh, it is 3,790 meters high. So we are in the Northwest, as we said, and you can see that the Northwest here, it's way greener than the South. This is because the volcano acts like a wall. So those winds stop and get condensed and all these clouds uh, are formed. We call it panza de burro, which means the donkey's belly, because when you look up to the sky, it's always gray. So this is good for vines because uh, we can grow them and everything is very lush. This is the volcano from different point of views. Um, it's pretty majestic. Um, Bodegas Vignatigo started this way uh, in my father's grandmother's uh, house, a very old and very small typical um, Canadian house. And of course it was all about the family helping, right? You have my great father and my grandmother here, my grandmother and my grandfather here. Um, and here is my dad. So he is the fourth generation of uh, winemakers. Uh, making wine is something that has always been in our family. So he just continued with the tradition. So he was like, what about those grapes? I want to learn more about them. And he started to uh, analyze them. And the thing is that in the Canary Islands, we never had phylloxera due to the um, volcanic soils. So he has been able to identify 82 um, grape varieties that exist in the island. Some of them doesn't exist anywhere else. Um, so they are like really native to the Canary Islands or not native because of course the vines were brought by the, by the conquerors, but endemic. They have kind of developed and crossed with other um, grapes there or just they disappear with the phylloxera in Europe and we don't know where they come from, right? Here you have all the recent volcanic eruptions from Volcano Teide coming down. So we are talking about soils that are around 7,000 um, years old. So geologically they are just babies, right? Um, and this is something that all our wines have in common and it's the presence of the minerality of those soils, the volcanic soils. No, what? You, bye. <laughs> yes, bye. bye. With all of our children going back to school, we thought we might take a trip down memory lane. And do <laughs> Caroline getting keen to review the uh, other video. Well, Car um, Caroline's going to have to do a little uh, IT uh, 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 summer IT school or something, school, it seems. Yes. Um, a little <laughs> summer school for a uh, little homeschooling for Caroline, a little IT. Quite yes. oh, right, so no more homeschooling. No more homeschooling. I think we'd let, if we can put a line under homeschooling, I'll be delighted. Now, um, wine from the Canary Islands, it, it's its a challenging place to make wine. It really, really is. Uh, like we said, the, there's winds, there's never the right amount of rain. It, it's, it, there's barely any on the, the It's a bit of, a of the all island. or nothing. It's, an, it's a bit feast yeah. or famine in the Canary Islands, and, and, isn't it? And it's a sulfurous place. You've got all of this volcanic activity that's bringing up stuff. These are young soils, and you can taste a bit of that in, in this wine. This is a wine that definitely benefits from a good aeration. You've got to really swirl it around to let it sort of, uh, you know, slightly reductive character. That's a geeky term, doesn't matter what that means, but what we say is with a wine from the Canary Islands, give it a good swirl around to really let it sort of open out and breathe, and then you can get a bit more out of it. Um, but, but what I love about these guys, and this, this winery in particular, like their cellars are in the, in the depth of the mountain. It's really cool. And and the guys who make the wine are just really great people. Gen they make some phenomenal stuff. So they, they make this, which is yeah. light, fresh, easy drinking. Is it something you're going to write a million pages of tasting notes about? 
No, if I, we go back to your things, I think that the, the, the flavours are concentrated in a few of those clusters. For me, there's a lot of sort of gooseberry style thing, but it lasts for a long time. So it's a good finish on it. It's a very good finish, good length. It, it keeps on going and in a quite a pleasant way, and it, it's definitely got the balance and um, intensity where it's lacking a bit is perhaps that complexity for me, but each their own. And, um, and it's a fun story. It's a really interesting story. And when you think of the food of the Canary Islands, they go big on mojo, baby. And uh, it's probably not Sorry, the, the Austin, Austin, Austin Powers, Powers is baby. on it, Exactly. Island. Austin Powers is actually on Tenerife. And they're all about these, these clusters of amazing uh, saline spices. And people were saying they're getting the, the salty character from the sea there. But you think about that food, it'll be things like rabbit stews with an awful lot of spice in it. And that would go spectacularly with that. So what grows together goes together, people say. I said that once. You did, indeed. I did, indeed. Um, but to go for a wine that's not on the tasting tonight, these guys, they make a red called Negrimol, one of my favourite wines on the planet. So if you ever want to try something a little bit different, it's big, it's spicy, it's red, it's delightful, it's delicious. Definitely it's something you should yeah. chuck in the decanter to get a bit of air to it. Yes. So uh, <laughs> if, you need a, if you need an outside bet from Tenerife, Negramol. Yeah, and Can't get your mojo wrong. on. Get get the get the barbecue out and get get all those spices on. Anyway, there. Anyway, speaking of mojo, I think it's time to mojo into Let's. physics. That was very slick. Very and that could have gone horribly yes, wrong. Could've... Couldn't it? Could have gone horribly, horribly wrong. Horribly but it didn't. So that's it all right. Didn't. So, so we're, we're we are going to Argentina on a summer holiday. And <laughs> so <laughs> nobody's going on a summer holiday. Don't be ridiculous. Um, but um, yeah, you did. I went to Cornwall. It's not the same. It's a staycation. It's not. No. It's clearly not a staycation. No, my staycation the was English staying. Be very disappointed. In the winery, I staycated here. You did. But, yeah. um, so we featured these guys. If you've been on the previous tasting, you'll you'll know a little bit about them. It's a group of friends who came together and started making some wine in Argentina, and they have, and which is what makes it relevant to the physics module here. Is it physically impossible to get there right now? Is it physically <laughs> impossible? Yeah, that might be true. But no, is that, was that not the answer? They share something in common with the Wrong. oldest wineries in the world. And the oldest wineries in the world. So new wineries have amazing technology. And you, you, you might have seen some of them in our, the early video when I was off at Plumpton, pumping this crushed grapes um, are, are, are into the different vessels. And it's, um, it's amazing what you can do with that. But there are some people who think that isn't a very pure way of doing it. And, and what instead and they want to do- it's not very gentle on their It's grapes. not gentle, no. And, and you know, it can be rough to bits at different times of the process. But ultimately, there is a thought process, which is we have gravity. So we'll not let it do the work. Do we? We do. Um, oh yeah, you know, we do. I don't, I, I don't think anyone's managed to That's disprove that. Size. The anti-vaxxers haven't yet got to to, to phys, uh, gravity, but do you know what else is physics? <laughs> Good catch. Oh, oh that's the of course. Very good. Okay. Anyway, um, so so with this, the grapes arrive in the top of the winery, and the wine comes out the bottom. And each stage of the process it goes through, it drops down the floor. And that is a brilliant, low intervention, nice, easy, natural way of doing things. No pumping, no bruising, no battering, no extra oxygen, no, no. extra aeration. No. So you get this beautiful, no, no fresh, risk of anything purity from the pump changing it anyway. And so it's a great thing for a, a great like Chardonnay, which really has to survive on the purity of the fruit. And, um, and so, yeah. Uh, we, we could let them have a little bit of a chat about that, I suppose, couldn't we? Because could. they made it. They made it, so we should um, let them talk about yeah, it. let's let them have a go. Hola, mi nombre es Ezequiel Manoni, soy enólogo de Bodega de Pasión. Y en esta oportunidad vamos a hablar muy brevemente acerca de la elaboración del vino de la línea Gran Chardonnay. Las uvas son cosechadas cuando están en su estado óptimo de madurez. Son cosechadas en cajas plásticas pequeñas son transportadas hasta la bodega, a la zona de recepción. Una vez recibidas, las cajas de uva son volcadas sobre una mesa de selección donde se hace una selección minuciosa y posteriormente caen a la despalilladora. La despalilladora lo que se produce es la separación del grano de uva del raquis o el escobajo. Ese grano de uva es bombeado hasta una prensa neumática donde se la somete a bajas presiones para extraer un jugo que sea de gran calidad. Ese jugo posteriormente es bombeado a 
tanques que están sometidos a bajas temperaturas, aproximadamente entre 6 y 8 grados centígrados. Lo que buscamos en esta etapa es que esas partículas que forman parte del turbio caigan hacia el fondo del tanque y el mosto o jugo quede limpio. Esto se denomina de borre previo. Una vez que nosotros tenemos el jugo limpio, lo que hacemos es trasegarlos a nuestras barricas de roble francés, donde van a sufrir la fermentación alcohólica a una temperatura entre 10 y 12 grados centígrados aproximadamente. Y una vez que ha terminado la fermentación alcohólica, todo el tiempo de crianza, durante 12 meses, lo va a realizar dentro de la misma barrica donde se produjo la fermentación alcohólica. Lo que nosotros hacemos es que esos pequeños residuos de la fermentación, que son levaduras muertas que van al fondo de la barrica, todo el tiempo de la crianza, mediante un proceso que se denomina matonage, es ponerlas en suspensión semanalmente. Y lo que buscamos es, por un lado, evitar la oxidación del vino, y por otro lado, esas cáscaras de levaduras muertas, cuando se abren, liberan proteínas y polisacáridos. Estas manoproteínas y polisacáridos le van a dar al vino un mayor volumen en boca, una mayor grasitud y una mayor suavidad que es lo que buscamos en nuestra línea de vinos. Eh, en este caso estoy degustando un vino de la línea Gran, es un Chardonnay de este año 2021. Este vino ya terminó su fermentación alcohólica, está en la etapa de crianza, ¿sí? y para que luego en enero, febrero, ya del año próximo, podamos levantar cada una de estas barricas, hacer nuestro corte, la clarificación y posterior filtración para ya fraccionar y poder, y poder eh, ofrecer este vino en el mercado como tanta gente les gusta y lo está esperando. Así que bueno, les mando un saludo y un abrazo a la distancia. Salud. Um, now we're talking. I mean, goodness me, that's a wine. That is cracking. I love that. Goodness me, that's a wine. That is a wine. Well, I wouldn't that's, expect that, that's, that's a fact. Insight. Well done. The level of insight you expect when you come to school with us. But it's, look, it's made by one of our favourite winemakers, isn't it? My second, maybe my second. <laughs> <laughs> the lights nearly went over. Um, well, that is fine. Um, this is, and I don't want to say... It's I think, I think, world, I, think it? I think it's I think it's great, but this could be potentially divisive because the people who don't yeah, want the big okay. oaky it's, rich style. Is, but I sure. think this is stylistically what a big oaky wine can be and still have that balance. It's not overblown oak. You've still got the fruit. You've still got that beautiful acidity. You've got oh, yeah. the balance. And if we you know we look back at that kind of. WSET. Oh, we, have we moved the tasting notes onto wine three? Yes. Ah, oh, well done, jolly good. Sorry, sorry, I was too busy listening. Oh, that's absolutely video. fine. No. Um, um, sorry, Jamie. I just thought I'd interrupt you and generally make things irritating. Okay, what we're going to have to do <sighs> for the rest of this? Pineapple. That's an interesting one. <laughs> okay, oh, yeah. whoever put that word has got to touch that, That's very naughty, whoever wrote <laughs> that. So, anyway. I think they meant vanilla. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that could be the world's worst autocorrect, but I'm worried about why you're... The world's worst tasting notes. <laughs> yes. So uh, oh gosh. The, dis practice. the decision will be up to you. I don't, but... I don't even think the people at home can see that yet, so <laughs> no, that's, that's nice. Jolly up? good. Yeah, let's yeah. pop it up. Put, okay. yeah. Oh no, are there are more people putting that in now. Oh, they're excellent. Oh, great. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Um, so, it is the classic New World formula for Chardonnay. This... this Reminds me of your ultra expensive, ultra high end Napa Valley Chardonnays. To me, you know, it's it's got that the lemon. Like, I think we can probably all agree there's there's lemon in there and there's vanilla in there and there's some of those riper fruits like the, the tropical fruits like pineapple. But where are we on with that lemon one? It's going to that slightly sort of, uh, you know, the lemon Lemony. curds. No, the, the 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 artificial lemon. The the you know. Lemon that peel. side of things, lemon peel, candied lemon, lemon. Candied lemon yes. indeed. Indeed. Um, and I don't know if there's any sugar in this one, but if you stick your tongue in, we can probably find out, can't we? I doubt there is. 
yeah. No. 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 So Mine dry. Just purely you're dry getting again. the you're getting the vanilla from yeah. the oak, from the leaves, from the batonage. Um, that brings it gives you that kind of like those sweet flavours. There's that you know it's warm climate, so you've got this baked apple fruit. So yeah. once again, being this baked apple reminds you of it being something sweet like apple pie. Um, it's warm, but this is high up. This is the Uco Valley, which is stunning. And I know we did Argentina recently, so we won't witter on about it. But what a beautiful place! Um, and it's right there in the shadows of the Andes Mountains, and it's high up, so that mm. gives it cool temperatures at night. But what's really interesting with these guys, because if we start looking around Europe and England right now, yeah. everyone's taking their grapes off the vines, aren't they? Well, they're, 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 they're trying to work to. out when they're going to be able to. It's, but, uh, but around yeah. that point of, the, point of time. Um, France, yes. But what, what we have, um, are we, are we, are we going to go back to our passion right now? Well, we could do the wine news. We'll do we? the wine news. So what we're going to do momentarily... While we'll... you're all putting your notes in, hopefully... Maybe Caroline can work out some crafty way of removing anything offensive from that one. But um, what, like oak? Oak, indeed. Oak, yeah. the, uh, that's a terrible word. Um, but we'll do the wine news. Then. Let's talk about the wine news because we'll wine news. we've got, only got a couple of things really to talk about, and then we're going to let these guys tell you what they've been up to and what they're up, uh, what is happening right now in Argentina in their in their vineyards and in their winery. But we're starting off first of all with Mr. Smith here has been off drinking wine. I know it's a staggering concept that what, that's what uh, instead of doing. being here drinking wine. Yes. So, what, tell why don't you tell our lovely audience who you've been judging with and what it means for them? What it means for them? Indeed. They got to hang out with me, so not a lot to be honest. <laughs> no, for the people at home, because oh, I, if I'm the for weird, the people at home, home, not the people. people okay, home, right. Not so I went down to the. I've got to get my letters right here. The I E W A. That is correct. Where a fine chap whose name is... Alex Taylor Indeed. is in charge. But not this Alex not Taylor. No, this but, well, you say that because there was a, a talk of this Alex Taylor coming to judge with me. And then he wasn't there. So the two Alex Taylors have never been never seen met. together. Just saying. Kind of a bit like me and Batman. <laughs> Fair point. But anyway, um, that's got nothing so to... So this is the so, Independent English Wine Awards. And it's a really cool up-and-coming competition in the world of English wine, isn't it? It's, it's absolutely fantastic. And what's great about And there's, there's lots of great wine competitions out there. And some do things differently. And no yep. one's good, no yep. one's bad. No, but what is good about this is it's a range of wine people. Yeah. So we've got winemakers, we've got sommeliers, we've got wine buyers, we've got small store owners, we've got big store owners, we've got people who just are interested in wine yeah. and like wine come down. So we get down there, there's 20 odd of us, we get put into these little panels and we taste all the wines blind and you know we come to this kind of consensus, do we think it's a gold medal, a silver medal, a bronze medal? Um, what was great is there was some absolutely phenomenal wines, there were some wines that weren't so great, and, but that's the point of having these things, to do, these things to do that. Know? But yeah. <clears throat> from the conversations that I had with a lot of people down there, you know, Masters of Wine stuff, the baseline of where English yeah, wine is, is going just up. going up. There, Even with the difficult last few years yeah, that we've had, there, it's there, amazing. There wasn't a load more gold medals than any be ever before. The, the stunning wines are still stunning, and mm -hmm. they're still in the minority of getting this gold medal. It's not, oh, that really is a gold medal. We don't hand out gold medals yeah. like sweets. If they're handing out gold medals like sweets, I'd start making wine. It'd be great. <laughs> That's a cork, not a sweet, but good effort. Um, so, so that that was really cool. That was a lot of fun. Um, the winners are being announced, um, and fingers crossed, we might with the online wine tasting uh -huh. club do a um, a one-off tasting for the gold medal winners. So you yep. will be able to sample um some six a of the a finest lot, a lot of the the of you know the finest wines yeah. you know a lot of the gold medals go to sparkling wines they absolutely do because that's what yeah, we're course, renowned yeah. for but what is great to see some of these still wines jumping up and doing that um quite right so that's uh, a pretty sorry. cool thing um he's also been off in oxford doing lots of wine tastings which oh is yeah cool. sign up for next year i'm getting ahead of the game we, what, why is there a liger on no that's no, it's not, not up yet. Don't worry. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm on the wrong screen. I'm on the wrong screen. I'm getting excited here. Um, it's on the 9th and the 10th. The 9th and 10th of September next year, Oxford Wine Festival. So I went and did that with um, with our lovely marketing and partnership person Izzy uh, last Saturday. Who's hey, hey, She's here tonight, uh, trying to see what we do in the studio. So she might not be here again. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, but I, I got I got over to Oxford. Fantastic, you know, loads of great new wines. Lots of the slightly smaller 
producers and um, we did it we did a few master classes um, we did an Australian one one on um, the wines of Spain and we did a, uh, a fun little uh, old vines um, tasting so that was a lot of fun so keep an eye out for that they, they run a really good show and it's beautiful it was you know just walking around absolutely beautiful setup um, yeah. the downside is it is in Oxford which is as we all know a complete dump and terrible university there just for the benefit of my father who went there <laughs> um, so, is, is that because um, you didn't get into that one? Uh, <laughs> Did you, you, <laughs> anyway, that's my rowing. There's that rowing. rowing. That's Very right. good. No, for someone, did, for someone who didn't go, to, for someone who didn't go to either. either. But there we go. Anyway, look, that's so got nothing to do with anything. That's irrelevant. Um, but like we said, we've got a bit of news, an update from the guys at El Pasión uh, about what's happening right now this month uh, since you last saw them in the winery. So let's. If you're already in need of another glass of wine, pour wine number four. Otherwise, let's, let's have a couple of minutes and watch what they're up to now, shall we? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Hi, my name is Cathy. I'm one of the founders and investors in Al Cachon Vineyard, which is located in the UK Valley in Mendoza, Argentina. And I'm also a member of the online wine tasting club now based here in the UK. What I'm going to do is to provide you with an update from the vineyard, which we're doing every month. This month, we're going to meet our resident agronomist and winemaker, Ezekiel Manoni. He's out in Argentina, and as you'll see from the filming, it's winter there at the moment. And he's going to tell us a little bit about the soil types and soil profiles we've got in the vineyard. Hola, soy Ezequiel Manoni, enólogo de Bodega del Pasión, y estamos ubicados en el distrito de Los Chacayes, una de las zonas más prestigiosas dentro del Valle de Uco, en la provincia de Mendoza. Tenemos 57 hectáreas de viñedos distribuidas en 23 parcelas y trabajadas de manera orgánica, siendo esta nuestra filosofía de trabajo y compromiso con el cuidado del medio ambiente. Nuestros suelos son de origen aluvional, poseen en profundidad una gran cantidad de rocas y piedras, mientras que los estratos más superiores son suelos netamente franco-arenosos. Estos suelos presentan una muy buena permeabilidad y un bajo contenido de materia orgánica, lo que da un crecimiento equilibrado en las plantas y esto es muy bueno para la producción de uvas de calidad. As it's winter in the vineyard, the vines are dormant. And one of the important things that SKL will show us is quick winter pruning of the vines. What that does is it cuts back the one year old wood to leave just a few buds which will form the shoots for next year's growing season and are therefore very important. Hola, soy Ezequiel Manoni, responsable de Enología y Agronomía de Bodega del Pasión. Y en esta oportunidad estamos finalizando con la tarea de la poda, que es una de las operaciones más importantes que tenemos en el viñedo, en la cual buscamos balancear la producción y el desarrollo vegetativo de la planta para obtener fruta de calidad en la cosecha. Welcome back. Now, Hola. we have done, uh, Caroline's having a little bit of a moment. It turns out she has a little bit of a love of men speaking Spanish, <laughs> which is interesting. But that's, that's, that's one that we will, we will we'll not, not bring changing. her to Spain. Yeah, I can, anyway, I, I can ruin that immediately. Not Hola, there. como estas? No, <laughs> it's over. See you later. Um, we are now going for a history lesson. And of course, if we're talking about history, there's lots of wine regions in the world which have claim to immense levels and depths of history. But there is one which that currently we believe tops them all because we have found archeological evidence going back 8,000 years in Georgia. Right next to Florida. Not that Oh, Georgia. we're not doing geography not anymore, Georgia. are we? Like, Sorry. Like, there's, there's, a, there's a wonderful line in the Book of Mormon where uh, they go, let me take you back to biblical times, 1843. And uh, it, it's, 
it, no, we are. Uh, Jamie, for his many sins, is an American as well as being British. But um, many sins. this is the other Georgia, the Georgia that finds itself in the Caucasus uh, region, and it is the home of winemaking as it's known today. They make a lot of wine in big clay vessels known as quevery and if you want to know a bit more about that we've got another video it's on the wines of eastern europe thing um so go and watch that we're not going to feed that one to you today but this is not made in a quevery this is made in stainless steel so this is taking one of the oldest most native grapes that only is found really in georgia and i know i say really primarily found in georgia because everybody takes a cutting and tries to bring stuff all around the world but this is separavi and it is made by Vachnaziani in a region called Cacheti. I'm glad you're introducing this. There you go. <laughs> but, so, when you come to the wines which are made in this traditional style, they can be immensely tannic. Immensely, immensely sort of rip your head off tannic. Cacheti is, is renowned for those sort of wines. And I think what I like about this is it's a little bit more subdued. A little bit more, dare I say it, balanced, you know. Yeah, it's got it's got a lot of elegance about it compared to sometimes you get them and you know when you get that massive oh, massive great. tanniny wine that you taste it and like you're, the the inside of your cheeks yeah. are like stuck to oh, like, oh, there's and so it, much tannin. And that's fine if you're having an immensely salty, acidic, beautiful, fatty meal which will coat your mouth and 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 just it just works so well together. But this is this is a much more sensible subdued version of this um and it's not even got that much age on it. it's only two years old so i think this has got the structure to if you wanted to age it a bit longer you you could you really could it's it will it will get better i think so and it's you know it's very much its own style of wine it's yeah. kind of difficult to go this is it's, kind it's, of like something if you um, blind it you're not going to say it's a bordeaux or it's a pinot noir no I, a, if, you know, if i blinded sort of, it i'd probably say it was a georgian separate because it's utterly utterly distinctive and unique and and yeah not that i'm blind not tasting blind tasting. <laughs> um <laughs> so but, did you did you see the list of the 10 red wines that they had to do in a row in the mw exam this year oh goodness we've got a few friends who are doing it and uh, all i can say is Wow, that was a tricky, tricky example. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. Um, um, but Saparavi is great because it's got this richness, it's got this, it's got this, element. it's got kind of what I like about a, a New World Merlot because it's got that depth of deep fruit. Yeah. But then it's got this little bit of spice. It's almost like either kind of like Northern Italian or like Roni. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, got that yeah, little bit of, get that. Little bit bit of earthy, texture. Spicy yeah. Um, at the same time. Yeah. So for me, it's, it's a bit best of both worlds. It's got that great kind of like New World style fruitiness. Yeah. But it's got that texture and that grip and that little bit of earthiness that... Could I quite happily sit here and drink a couple of glasses of it? Yeah. It doesn't have to have food. No, but it would be so good with food. It would be food. so good would with so food good as well. Food. So it's it's really yeah. it's really versatile. And it's for me, this is kind of this is this bottle of wine that if you go out to a restaurant and someone's having a steak and someone's having a burger and someone's having like mushroom ragu or something like that, you can stick a bottle of this yeah. in the middle. Is, is it going to be perfectly with any of them? Maybe not. But will it be really good for the table? And it everyone depends who's chopped the mushrooms. <laughs> Yeah, if you need you, you know, you want that. If your mushrooms aren't quite meaty enough, <laughs> I've, I've, I've tailor prepped them for you. But that's not that. That's You've got good. to make fun of it, or you'll cry. I haven't even mentioned that I fainted, but there we are. Um, <laughs> um, and hit my head. I did also hit my head. It was a great holiday. I hit my son's head as well, but that was on a separate occasion. The poor. What did he do? <laughs> oh, not like that. Shot <laughs> the mushrooms, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I'm gonna show you one more time, <laughs> he's two. I've got to wait until he's at least three before I give him instruction on how to use a sharp knife. Well, and, if you need me to, I'll, first, tra I'll, I'll train him. Yeah? yeah, I think you should probably train him. But um, Georgia, um, uh, it's a country that was deep in the middle of, of the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, and it lost a lot of its, what made it unique, a lot of its, a lot of its own grapes. They wanted to plant out grapes that would grow at scale so that they could make things cheaply and distribute them as cheap as possible for the whole of the Soviet Union, and and that meant variety was the enemy. And yet somehow, because of the tradition of of making and you know growing grapes and making wine in your own home that exists in that part of the world, 
a lot of these grapes survived. And it's a, it's a miracle that it's still here with us today. And we should be glad that we've still got the genetic diversity of all these different uh, grapes. I'm supposed to be talking about history, not biology. But but yeah, this is the most historic wine in the world, uh, as that you can say, without going into the, the Kevry made ones, which are, are challenging, as we can say. But, but cool. Absolutely. Um, great wine, great history. And I think wines like this you know, are, are huge for people to be able to go. Hmm. I've oh, tried Caroline's something different. Oh, moving on to wine number four. Excellent. So you know, your I've, tasting notes are now open to uh, pop in what you think of this one. Um, but I, ju I just think this if is... If you've got some cheese, do have it with this one. That oh, one's sorry, really... we've been very busy with Snack Chat. Oh, good. Snack Chat. Yeah. Snack Chat. Is that, can is we, that can the we create billion that dollar is that, unicorn company? Yeah. Is that going to be our Snack new Chat. social media app for food and wine pairing? Yeah. Take Snack pictures. Chat. You can take pictures of it and send it to your friends with the yeah. wine you're drinking. Snack Chat. And we've also been discussing about Pong Cheese next. Anyway, Hang on, we've just invented oh. the next unicorn company. That's amazing, Snack Chat. Uh, Snack Chat. Watch out, um, perfect. Watch out, Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so Snack Chat aside, um, so do you have some snacks with this wine? This is a very foody wine. Yes. Sorry, I'm just yes. I'm lost on Snack Chat here. He's lost on Snack Chat. Um, yeah. He, but anyway, he where, the where was my point? My, my 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 point was with this. This is. And after doing this old wines masterclass last last week, there's so many people who chase the new big thing. They hear this is cool. Yeah. Let's rip up all the things and plant this because yeah, Merlot's trend, big yeah. or Malbec's big or Prosecco's Shiraz is big or, or whatever. Sauvignon Blanc's it is. big and, and you know, everything went in New Zealand in favour of Sauvignon Blanc. Areas like this, areas like down in the south of Italy where they're growing these Falangidas and Aglianico de Vature yeah. and things like that. I think this is amazing. And these are the wines that. When you get a chance to get into your local wine shop or into a restaurant yeah. and try something different. Give it a try. This is amazing, it's you know. It's not like a slightly different version of the same wine that you drink every day. And if you'd love it, drink loads. Yeah. If you don't love it, go, guess what? I tried it. It's not my tried kind it. of thing. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Um, and for if, anyone... I mean, if you're in Georgia and you go, I like it, but I don't like it enough to buy it. And then you find yourself in Eastern Europe and someone presents a Saparava, you go, oh, I don't know if the others on list. That, at least I've got that one. That's quite nice. So, yeah. I like that idea. I like um, that idea. And, 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 and it's quite sad because we were actually going to be invited on a tour of Georgia. Um, and of course, that has yet again been scuppered by you know, <laughs> ah. communism. It smells of communism. <laughs> Get that up now. <laughs> oh, good lord. Yes, this is a dark comrade. Uh, Yes. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yeah. Because we have sent it to share with everybody. Yeah. Everyone has the same portion. The club members are on fire. This is no, hilarious. We've had badges and communism. I, I apologise for it's anyone who's joined us. Does, does that mean that so badges and communism? Does that mean that everybody gets a badger? <laughs> no, everyone gets the and tiniest then, part of a badger. There's no use at all. And, and people <laughs> with lots of badgers badger. have to. Work their way down. Yeah, anyone with more than one badger gets. Okay, gets, okay, gets this is getting silly. We over badgered it last month. We are, we are, we are, we are badgering the points. We are indeed. Um, so, history. <laughs> My God, have we still got two more? Yes, we do. Right, let's get on, shall we? Because yeah. the next one, if you're we're going to get, on, we're going to get onto the serious we're, we're stuff. Going, we're going from a nice, simple, easy one that at least everyone can agree they like, like Saparavi, to Pinotage. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so things that I like, things that I like. Pinot Noir, do you like Pinot Noir? Yes. I like Pinot yes. Noir, do you like Pinot Noir? Do you like Pinot Noir? Nice. Nice. <laughs> Izzy with her brand new tasting notes, nice. nice. Okay, Cinto, you like Cinto? Nice. Um, yes, good I, 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 To be honest, I only generally have it in a rosé where you can't taste anything other than the colour. But we like Cinto, don't we? Yeah. So, we had a lovely old time We did have one, yeah. So, if we like Cinto... And we like Pinot Noir, yeah, because I've got to get the I've got to get the wine. Oh, Thirsty. I thought you were going to tell a story. It, I'm no, actually going to have to. I would have walked that back. way and that way and that way to tell a story. I'm coming back to my chair to tell the story. Uh -oh. so, that's not good. <laughs> What's going on? Am I still talking? Uh, if you can still hear us, the computer has made a worrying noise and. Uh, <laughs> Drive yes. in the camera, is it? Uh, no, it's not. 
it's the flash drive that has all our videos on it. So that's exciting. Um, hopefully, why don't you transition away to the black screen and come back and hopefully it will still be working. Um, go to, uh, not the intro, because that'll do it to black and come back. I think we're live. Oh, okay. what did you do? What well, I think do? Caroline's live, so okay. don't worry, I'm going to pop back right. to tech problems and you're we'll right get there. back. Welcome back. Otage. Sorry about that. We don't know what's happened to the computer, but it went ding and hey, suddenly. Hey, would it be are. online wine tasting club without a quick pause to say hello again? Well, indeed. I think the uh, IT department needs to get the, the IT department needs to step up. Or, Let's go, go. or go back right. to school. The quick, quick version. Oh my god, it's just made that noise again. Um, we're back to Pinotage, South Africa, and it's still working. Happy times. Um, I'm a bit worried about the end credits, but we'll give it a go anyway when we get to that point. Um, Pinotage is a blend of Pinot Noir and Sanso. Is I think where we've just about got to. Absolutely. Both of those are delicious grapes. So, a so why so, do you get such a bad name? So a blend. Do they? Well, they, they take some Pinot Noir and some Sanso and put a glass together. No. No. Right, so we do need to get a bit do technical with our language, don't we? And I think we might be about ready to have our picture of a liger because we had a special guest the other day in our winery um, and it was a master of wine whose name is Sarah Abbott who is absolutely lovely and we love her to bits. And um, um, <clears throat> I shouted out, um, Jamie, can you remember which is a hybrid of two vines and which is a cross of two vines so a blend would be something like Bordeaux where you take some some Cabernet Sauvignon wine that's come from Cabernet Sauvignon grapes and you blend it with Merlot no, wine from put it Merlot together grapes. into a barrel and then it all blend. comes together that is a blend that yeah. is neither a cross nor a it's hybrid it's not a cross nor a hybrid you also have grafts which is where you take a root vine and you have the grape vine and you stick them together nice. in the shape of a like an omega a greek letter o um and and you put them all together and one acts as the the roots and one acts as the grapes but the grapes are 100 percent those grapes or those grapes whatever the the, the what they call the scion who cares what it's called but the, the they're the grapes you expect so before you go into the tech i'm going to explain why this may have come about yeah all right so um south africa people liked pinot noir yeah does really well in burgundy does really well in Cool relatively climate. cool climates. South Africa, a bit hot. So what they thought they could do is they had loads of Cinso growing. And Cinso grows very well in the south of yeah. France. It makes delicious red wine, makes lots of rosé. But it grows bulk. It's like a weed. It puts some Cinso in the ground. You've got Cinso. More Cinso. Over it. Cinso. And that was it's the problem South Africa dramatic. had. What it's that? Like, <laughs> exactly. It's like saving Private Ryan over here. <laughs> Cinso. Anyway. So, so what they thought they could do is if they took the Pinot Noir that they loved and somehow made it grow, like the Cinso, they would end up with 
and great, a grape. Well, a, a, yeah. well, and a great wine that basically they wanted to be Pinot Noir that grew well. Yeah. So how basically. did they do that? So what you have, and we, <laughs> am I going to have to explain the birds and the bees here? But basically we're talking about sexual reproduction. And basically you have... If you didn't say it with that creepy voice, it would be no, all right. It's true. It, it, no, this, this is biology. biology. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Okay, okay. Strand is his back for extra Mar credit. Oh, so, <laughs> most we, we did much better when she was Shut working up. from home. Come on, let's get back on track. So, normally when we try to create a new vine uh, to put a second one in your vineyard, you basically you take a cutting of the first one and it's genetically identical to the first one. Yeah. But if you take... Uh, basically, the, the the daddy grapevine and the mummy grapevine, and you introduce them to each other and put some romantic music on and give them a glass of wine, and then something happens and they have a baby grape. Well, and it's very must exciting. Be it love, must be love. It must be love. Don't, that's Dana. madness. Don't that is it. madness. Sorry. But, um, but the, the, so, and that makes what's called a cross. Now, that is the equivalent of a cocker spaniel mummy and a poodle daddy. And here we have an ex a picture on the screen of a beautiful, delightful little cockapoo. Jamie owns a cockapoo, whose name is something. Lily. Lily, dog, <laughs> I call it. I go, it comes. To, I'm not very good with names. So it comes. To, Hello, dog. <laughs> anyway, so Lily is a cockapoo, which means a mummy of one kind and a daddy of the other kind. Now we get onto the other kind of of sort of way of crossing vines, and um, it's hard not to go a bit technical. But basically, when you've got the, the, the hierarchy of life, you go up from dog and you get to sort of mammals and things like that, and or the, the whole sort of canine species, foxes and you know dingoes and all of those kind of things, wolves and stuff like that. If you go up to that level and get them to have a happy, sexy time together, then you create a hybrid species. Are, are you trying out for the new Borat film? Which is <laughs> very nice. <laughs> But that so so people have been doing cross species of vines and they have you know really common Cabernet Sauvignon is a mix of Cabernet Franc and Sauvignon Blanc. Yes. And then they are crossed together. Oh you've just answered a question. Ah, there we go. Happy times. Excellent. Accidental answering a question. Brilliant. Um where you get a bit beyond that is where you go for these hybrid species which mm. take take some some skills which are not normally associated with the Vitis vinifera species of plants so the vitis vinifera that are the is, is the grapes grape that we know for making grapes so make your wine. chardonnay your sauvignon blanc your riesling yeah. those kind of things then All there's vitis then vinifera. there's other grapes those are dogs and then there's other grape species that are your your table yeah. grapes that you you eat from there and exactly, the things yeah. that make grape soda and grape jam yeah, and grape jam grape like jelly for your peanut butter and jelly yeah. Sandwiches for the, my American Precisely, bit. your peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And when you take one of those not grape, uh, wine grape species and you cross them together and you introduce them, you get a hybrid species. And they can have some really cool properties. Um, like, for example, they're really good at dealing with droughts or they're really good at not... Cold needing, weather. No, cold weather. or so, Need our blog, so, ice wine. Yeah, and, 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 and do you know what? They're, they're perfectly suited for these marginal climates as well, some of these. They, they're called them peewees. I have absolutely no idea why. I probably should have paid more attention. But, but yeah, these are these hybrid grapes, which are a lot of people think are the future of wine grape growing as the climate keeps changing. And as it, things become more marginal. And so, yeah, keep an eye out for some keep slightly eye, weird hybrid grapes. Because it is an interesting thing, isn't it? Yeah. Because there's, there's a lot of, in the upper echelons of wine, a pressure put on being a single style yeah. from a single place and a single yeah. this. But if you can take the best of both worlds and bring it together to create a, a super grape yeah. that, that does something quite special for where you're it's trying to grow cool. it, you can do really well. But so. Pinotage doesn't have a reputation as a super grape. It has a bad reputation because it suffered in the vineyard from a lot of diseases, viruses in particular. And um, one of them, I think it was, was it... Um, uh, f oh, leaf roll. Leaf roll, thank you. I was trying to call it fan roll, and that didn't sound right. Leaf roll, which That's curls when up. the leaves roll. It, it is indeed when the leaves roll. For a technical And that gave the wines that you got a rubbery, quite bitter, unpleasant taste. 
Absolutely, and you got this kind of like tarry burnt yeah. tire kind of thing. But there this was a like but this. there was a lot of bulk unscrupulous winemakers who had made their wine and go, yeah, that's what it's going to taste like. Yeah. That's that's the terroir. That's, that's, that's the, classic, the style. Yeah. And it's just not, not. It's absolutely not. Uh, when Pinot Targe is done wrong. right, it's really quite <laughs> yeah. good. Um, and and the the nice thing is that now winemakers have all the tools where they can look at the the juice and they can go, does it have the bad bits in or not? And if it's got the bad bits in, don't use it. <laughs> Simple as that. Exactly, and it's about having a passion for your craft. Yeah. And if you just want to swill it into a bottle and get it out, you can do that. But if you've got a bit of care and a bit of craft, you can get away with uh, yep. not having these these bad bits in there. So. And Swartland is a cool part of the world. It's a beautiful and bleak and rugged region, and it's all these small farms that come together. And 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 this, I, I think that's a really good example of it. Fourteen percent alcohol. It's got a bit of that sort of herbaceous nature that it does nice little bit of spice, yeah, good fruit, bit of well spice. balanced, chewy. It's yeah. a, Good wine. And it's called Svartland because Svart basically means black, black in Afrikaans. And it's covered in this 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 bush called rhino bush. That yeah. In the summer it dries out and literally goes black. It looks like a charcoal desert. It's absolutely yeah. amazing. And the soils are extraordinary. Okay, I think we're getting a bit adventurous. Oh, okay. Right, we're going too geeky. Fine. People are getting quite confused. All right. So, um, that is fine. So, Pinot Noir, Pinot and Sanso came along, had a baby called Pinot Sage, And it got a bad <laughs> rep because people were hiding the fact that the vineyard had a disease. And the ones where they don't have a disease come into this bottle, and I like it. Lovely. Which is good, because, I, I again, I, I, I'm quite happy to go on paper and say I've had a lot of pinotages that I hate with a passion. And, and you know, if you hated them, that's fine, <laughs> because they weren't very good. So try, try this one. Try some other examples. There are some great, great wineries out there in South Africa now. And... Um, Should we move to our final our, to our final class final of the wine. evening? And final for wine. wine number six, we are going on to maths. Which, I've got to be honest, is a little bit tenuous, isn't it? But what we're going to talk about very, very briefly, because I know it's late at night, is oak and maths. Is that right? Is that the, um, the crux of it? Oak and maths. And wine. And wine. So, we are doing a Rioja. So, this is Lanzando Crianza Rioja. Um, Rioja made with Tempranillo. This is mainly Tempranillo. It's got a yep. little bit of Graciano in it. But Rioja is famous for having its rules on oak aging. Yeah. And not all oak is created equally <coughs> no. in quality, in style. Or also in size. Caroline's dying. So from the, what? Uh, what? There. what? <laughs> uh, oh, have we moved on to wine six? By the way, sorry to yes. interrupt you dying, but <laughs> if you can stop, if you can stop dying and move the poly V on, that'd be great. Thank you very much. There's a fox in there. That's exciting. Oh, I didn't bring a poly V. What does the fox say? Oh, I think she's going to bring up wine number five, so you can see it oh tastes of apartheid and Oscar yeah. Pintori. <laughs> I, I sometimes Honestly. wonder. Honestly. Honestly, children, you need to go home yeah, and have a little word with it. No. Yeah. No, that's that's, that's yeah. very funny. It's um, very back to school. God. Whose who's children have got It, it looks to like home. the back of my, uh, uh, the, the, the desk lid that I had <laughs> on there. Um, anyway, so we, we one should, of my six. Okay, what we've learned is we're not do, we're not doing a ninety percent alcohol wine <laughs> one start, anymore, are no. we? Um, Actually, not for the producer. Can't be no. trusted. Um, so <laughs> we're talking about Rioja because Rioja has lots of oak, oak elements in it. So we thought we'd move it to barrels and talk about the size of different barrels because not all barrels are great. We can have little barrels, medium barrels, big barrels. So we're going to hand over to Senor Winemaker here, oh, thank you. who will explain why a barrel size might be important. Simply, says Caroline. So, simply speaking, to be honest, simply the only the answer that needs happen is simply. Bell. Like, <clears throat> the, no. the more wine there is in the barrel, the less it gets character from that barrel. Because it's the difference between volume and area. And the volume goes up by, you know, a factor of, you know, to, to the power of three and the area goes up to the power of two. And that's that's less. So if you go for a 500 litre barrel, you'll get the same kind of properties that allow that wine to age beautifully that we love Sorry, with can I pause barrel. for just a minute? 
Caroline, simple enough that three is a bigger number than two for you? Are you okay with that? <laughs> or two is less than three? Which would you prefer? Yeah. Uh, two is less than okay. three. Oh, two, two is less than three. <laughs> so, um, Like the Cinto. It, that's a vast simplification, Mark, but it's irrelevant. The point is that you can, you can get less of the characteristic. The little bit of air comes in from that side. Sorry, mm, cherry, um, <laughs> is on the tasting notes. Um, and um, yeah, you, you get less of the flavours that come from that, but you still get the, the quality that you get from oak. So what, what you find with Rioja is that they will love to use a, a variety of different barrel sizes and create lots of different components. And they'll do some that are in those 225 litre barrels, some are in 500 litre barrels, some are in bigger, and they, they bring them together. And uh, mostly speaking, they use American oak. Yeah, Which very much so. Flavors of vanilla and yeah, cedar you know, and clove, and that bit of kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And those kind of things, and that's classic. Um, but increasingly, some of them are using some French oak, which is a bit more expensive as well, and gives you, you know, slightly more refined flavors, as the French would love to say, anyway. Um, but yeah, moist and prunes. Um, but I think this is a really cracking Rioja, and. The other thing that we haven't talked about is value for money. And there's a, I, I think this is going to be seen as a very good value for money Rioja because it is absolutely delicious. Absolutely. Very reasonable. And that reasonableness comes by the fact that they've been able to use those, some of those bigger barrels to reduce their oak costs. Because oak's really expensive. You've got to wait for a tree to age so, 80, 100 years. So a barrel like this that you see behind us, which is, yeah. a, which is a fairly standard size, yep. what you'd find in Burgundy or Bordeaux or something like that. One of these brand new com it, from one of the top producers is about a thousand euros. Well, yeah, actually, they're, they're, they're going up now. So, like, as everything. What, what's not? It, it, yeah. It's what's going not? up in price and you can't get one. Yeah, so don't worry about one, it. No, no. So, but yeah, the, the, the sort of the midpoint on, you know, a, a, a really decent oak, manufacturer for an American oak barrel is about a thousand euros. You go up to a high-end French oak, it can be three thousand euros. And it holds three hundred bottles. So that's ten euros per bottle of wine just from the cost of that barrel. So yeah. Is that your maths? It's not it, uh, that's my maths. My maths, you want my maths? So my maths, there was a guy, Gordon Shepherd, who studied uh -oh. who studied at Yale. Okay? Right. That's America, okay? And he did a study. He killed Ben than Oxford. <laughs> you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna isolate some people here. So he did a study, and it worked out that studying and smelling and tasting wine lights up and uses more grey matter in your brain than doing complicated maths equations. Ooh. So if you want to keep your brain smart and sharp, taste more wine, do less equations. So... Uh, that's my She's fun fact. She's about to fewer, isn't she? <laughs> Can I just say, thank yeah. God for Cathy Byrne. Thank you, Cathy Byrne. Because Cathy has put two very key facts in the Oh, has she? Mm. Excellent. Smaller barrels mean less oak contact and more oxygen exposure. Okay. And French oak barrels cost 1,200 euros and American oak is about half the price. Yeah, so uh, I've got a Segan Moreau barrel that was about a thousand euros with the importing tax, but that was because we're doing one at a time. To be fair, so sorry, the, not the importing tax, the the the, the transport costs. But um, but yes, uh, it's generally it's it's in that sort of region of the, the French oak because the French oak is split down the grain of the wood rather than being carved in a big saw. And that is a big, big difference. Um, when you then put the wine into an American oak barrel, it gets absorbed into the wood because you've, you've, you've cut across the grain of the wood. And so it all seeps into those things. And I've, you lose I've, so I think much we're, wine. We're, we're, it's we're, ridiculous. I know. I think we're moving That's a bit, back but, in. Well, yeah. but the thing is, it's the same with anything. Barrels, there's, you know, you can buy a Ford Fiesta. It's a car. You can buy a Ferrari. It's a car. It depends what you want out of it. Oak barrels can be exactly the same. Um, so I think you've got to bear that in mind. Not, an oak barrel is not an oak barrel. And if you're a geek, you can have a deeper meaningful about it. Yeah. But is, but should we, uh, should we find out what the wine of the night was? Let's, let's, let's or let, Well, let's have a look at people's let's tasting notes first. Let's find out what... Oh, um, my God. Okay. I'm not going to show this one. Right, yeah. Okay, so um, 
I think there's some nice notes in there. Blueberry, leather, spice, raspberry, raspberry mm, cumin. Cherry. We've got some cumin in there. Yep. Um, unfor do. Unfortunately, someone's got a little bit excited and therefore we can't, we put can't this up. pop that one Sorry, up. guys. But um, um, light oak, spice, but what, 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 what we'll do we'll is well we will, we'll get, we'll get the, when we get the email out with the wines we had tonight, we'll send you the, uh, the tasting notes that were from there. So, yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, it's guys. It's, it's it's meant to be fun, but you know, if we get to the stage, we can't put the tasting notes up. It ruins it a little bit for everybody. <laughs> um, yeah. But okay, should we have a look at the pro on to... prices? Oh no, favourites. Favourites first. Let's find out the. Let's one get the your favourites. Okay. Well, I have an idea. What what it's going to be. I'll put my vote down here. What's your vote? Um... Oh. Okay. Me and Alex are different. Caroline. Number number of fingers for what you think your favourite is. I haven't tasted two of them. Well, why? Because she was she was, you di she was, di like she was dying in the corner. Remember? Any any further thoughts? Anything we're missing in the chat? Anything that we need to know? No. Wow. Uh, There's some surprises coming out there. Um, it's not it's not over yet by a long shot, but wow. Based on the oh no okay. Yeah, that that's pretty much what I thought. I, I, I was expecting that, but I wasn't expecting the one that's coming in the second place. No, it was delicious. Though. I was. Uh, well, it, it's an acquired taste, but it, it's one of those things that you learn to appreciate as I'm you go through life. I'm surprised so. how well wine number one's done. Yeah. That's what I was. That's what I was saying. Because yeah. oh, <laughs> that's in second place. So back back to maths. Sorry, the yes. bigger the number, the better it's doing. Yeah. Okay. No, I, yeah. Sorry. Stupid so moment. it looks like it's a very, very runaway victory for wine number three at the moment. And I gotta say, I think that's the right answer because that was absolutely delicious. So there's a there's a Napa Valley Chardonnay called Far Niente, which is really, really good. And I I think if you put those side by side, um, it would be a very, very it would be a comparison. it would be a delicious tasting. It would be a delicious tasting. And they're of that same kind of kind of thought process and everything and, and and people talk about the Uco Valley in Argentina being the new Napa Valley and I think it is but that is a brilliant showing from wine number one and I'm really pleased with that because because Madeira needs a bit more love it's it, it should it's not just this really sweet in your face kind of um, like post dinner drink that you have when someone of your family brings out the bottle they've had that is a cool drink, and it goes so well with food, and that's I think what people love about no, it. No, absolutely. So Chardonnay for the win. Chardonnay Madeira for the win. did well. Um, yeah, Saperavi's done pretty well too. Yeah. I, I thought the Saperavi would be the one tonight, so that's you know that's where my opinion was as it drops back down again. <laughs> um, but you know, it's it just shows once again everyone's going to like different things and yeah. this is the joy of what we do we try something new we try something different and you know it's exciting times um do we want to put the price up and then we can see if there's yeah. any 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 comments any once, once, once once the prices go up well, if you've got any thoughts in the in the comments as to what might be different and you go oh that that would yeah. that would change my mind um because you know, i think that you know the 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 Saparavi being 10 under quid 10 pounds is, is it, it, when you compare it to other wines that are of that sort of price point, I think that is probably the most interesting wine you can get for 10 quid. So, what's happening next? What's happening next? Great question. So, um, we are, obviously we have our other series, the Adventurer series, are going to Bordeaux. And we are going to be trying whites, we're going to be trying left banks. There's a river that runs through Bordeaux. Uh, what's it called? Garonne. Ah, the Garonne, of course. And then it splits off uh, into the Dordogne, doesn't it? Yeah. And the Gironde. Um, and the Gironde. So, and there's a bit in the middle. But if we tell them all this right now, there's no need yeah, to come no on the tasting. Yeah, there's no need to come on the tasting. But so, um, all afternoon. there is the left of it and there is the right of it uh, uh, of the river. And uh, the left side does Cabernet Sauvignon heavy blends. And the right side does Merlot heavy this blends. Is, this is Bordeaux line too and much information. It is Bordeaux line too much information. If you come on our tasting, you will not be scared when you go in front of a Bordeaux list and go, oh, what the hell's and that? find your new favourite claret. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So we're doing, and, 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 sorry, and we're doing, we're doing Bordeaux, Bordeaux next, next Saturday? Next, not this Saturday. Yeah, not this Saturday. Next Saturday. Next Saturday. 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 Yeah. Yep, so on the 25th we're doing Bordeaux. Yep. Going into next month, Discoverers, for those of you who are a member, 
Oh, You're gonna get yeah. the wines anyway. We are collaborating with Pong Cheese. And what I want to make Pong sure that great. everybody is very, very clear about, we're collaborating with them, but we are not fulfilling the cheeses, yeah. okay? So some people, just to reiterate, some people um, have put the leaflet that we sent out into the recycling bin. Okay. If they email info at towtc.co.uk yeah. and ask for the details, we can give them Email the us at info at towtc.co.uk and we will give you a copy of that, that, that leaflet so that you can get your cheese. But basically it is Pong Cheeses, and there's not that many companies called Pong Cheese if you look it up. Um, and uh, their next month's box for their subscription comes. They're just like us, but for cheese, and we're like them, but for wine. And, Absolutely. And so they're really great guys. And they will be coming on to the tasting to explain a bit about the, uh, the the cheeses and why they think they're so good. Absolutely. So that's going to be fun. We've also, on our adventures, we're going to do Northern Italy next month. So the Chianti's, yeah. the Brides, the cool things of the world. Um, in November, we are yet to decide. So I'm going to put it to the club. <laughs> we are going to do a versus. We are going to do a somewhere versus somewhere so three so the flights rivalries side of the world. by side. So if you yeah. want to see, we've done England versus the world. So we're not going to do that yeah. again. But if you want to see France versus South Africa or Spain versus Brazil or whatever you fancy, get us a shout. Let us know what you want to do and we will make it yeah. happen. Either put it in the chat, put it on Facebook, find us on Instagram, tell your friends to email us and we will create a versus. And I think what I'd also like you to do is if you pick the side and go, I would like Jamie to be that country <laughs> and Caroline to be the other and Alex just to dance or whatever he does. Or Alex to be something. Um, or get rid of me. I'm happy to, you know, if you don't want me anymore, that's <laughs> fine. Uh, but lots of cool stuff. So we had a wonderful on. set of suggestions. We had a complete list of, of, of some, some tastings and we are going to be from, from one of our brilliant, brilliant members. And that is going straight into our next thinking session, which we're greatly looking forward to. It is not, so we've done a year. We've done a year. I was just about to say that. This is my last point before we let yeah. everybody either go keep home. drinking or go, go home. Don't They're at home. home. <laughs> um, but this is a year to the day that we did our pre-launch for the Online Wine Tasting Club. So we've been doing this for 365 days today. Oh. And um, from me and Alex, you know, at the very beginning, it was just me and him. And we've built the team, we've brought Caroline on, we've got Cherry, we've got Sharon, we've got Vitas, we've got Izzy, we've got Dan, we've got an entire packing team. We've, we've got Molly. We've, we've got, got yeah. Molly, and we've got too many. And if I miss someone, please yeah. don't cry, because you're all bloody amazing. We've got, this core following of people who join us every month and go, Thank you're you. great. I, I went down to this white station like, oh, you're Jamie. I've never met you. I've seen you on YouTube. <laughs> it's, it, it's absolutely amazing. And it's the people who turn up every month and have dealt with the tech issues and the microphones and the whatever it is that have got us to where we've got. And if you uh, look, if you go back and look our very first one we, <laughs> compared to where we are now, I think we're, we're worlds apart, but we're only there because of the continued support of everyone who buys a pack every month, yeah. the team who turns up and puts up with us and our bad puns and his even worse shirts on a monthly basis. Um, so and really- And saxophone. Yeah, exactly. It has been, to be fair, absolute, Madness. It has been complete madness. And um, the lovely thing about it is that we've been able to put wines... So because we buy the wines ourselves, we d this has been our, our message from day one. We don't just go around every winery in the world and say, give us free wine because we're marketing it for you, because then it becomes irrelevant. We want to tell no, you When I ask for stories. free wine, I'm drinking it myself. True. But we, we, want, we want to give you the interesting stories. And if we go to Vachnaziani in, uh, uh, in Cajeti in Georgia, they aren't making enough to just go, yeah, have 36, 48 bottles, whatever it is. It, it's, it's, it's a privilege to put these wines in front of you and to give wines that you won't encounter on a daily basis. And that's why we do it, because it's fun to taste around the world and do different things. And even if the wine isn't the most amazing wine you've ever had, it's exciting to try all these different things no absolutely so we know we've run over tonight we've yeah, had a lot to go that. through we had well, to do in one time it, which it, is a bit it, of a it's been a lot of fun but um am i able to say that you know hopefully as you you drink these wines you can learn to don't drink that doing these uh, but i hope it works good luck <laughs> good roll credits Get box.
boxes. Bag in boxes. Bag in boxes. I'm not filming you. You better go away if he's filming. Bag in boxes. <laughs> Naughty boys in wineries, crushing grapes and stirring leaves, racking barrels, pumping juice, breaking their winemakers' tools, vineyard managers in the pub, working out which buds to rob, trying not to think of when the pruning time will come again. Oh, what fun we had, but did it really turn up bad? All I learnt at school was reason can taste our petrol. Oh, what fun we had, but at the time it seemed so bad. Trying Chardonnays, they're not as bad as some folks say. Jamie's had enough today. All the courts have TCA One's a smell of wet cardboard Burgundies we can't afford Sits alone and swells his glass Is it him to fresh cut grass? Alex wears a stupid shirt Best way got it all your eyes will hurt Oh what fun we had But did it really turn out bad? All I learned at school Was reasons can taste our petrol Oh what fun we had But at the time it seemed so bad Trying Chardonnays They're not as bad as some folks say Lots of girls and lots of boys, lots of smelling Pinot Noirs. This wine was a total fail. Caroline, what's its name again? Bagging boxes, awful shirt. Why do cheap ones taste like dirt? Time for us to pack it in. Off to bed with a tonic and gin. Oh, what fun we had! But did it really turn out bad? All I learnt at school was reasons can taste our petrol. Oh, what fun we had! But at the time it seemed so bad. Trying Chardonnays, they're not as bad as some folks say. Bag in boxes, 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 bag in boxes.